Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to Satisfactory, where last time we kept working on our aluminum build here, and got 2,730 Alclad aluminum cases produced per minute. And now today we want to move on to our main goal of all this stuff, to make over a thousand batteries per minute, and cover the sky with drones. And that would have been the plan today, if not for the entire world collapsing right now. First, because we're gonna have a major shift in production. And second thing is, we have another minor problem at the nuclear power plant. So first of all, we of course have to fix the nuclear power plant because I have no idea what's going wrong. Which is the worst kind of problem. We are running the entire plant under capacity, so if anything, that nuclear power plant should be more stable than ever. However, I've noticed we are slowly losing production power. Like this should be around like 225, but now we're at 200,000. So we gotta go there first before the entire world collapses. Which two, was it this one? Yes. Oh yes, and of course, if you enjoy, remember to subscribe and leave a like. Okay, but hopefully the problem is a quick fix and nothing too crazy. By the way, I'm underclocking this power plant by turning off a bunch of the reactors. Or at least a lot of them. Just so we have nuclear fuel rods build up. Which isn't happening. So that's kind of weird. In fact, yeah, this is extremely weird. We're not backed up on nuclear waste either. But we don't have any nuclear fuel rods. Interesting. This is a new one. So it's a problem with production then. We've never had a problem with production yet. This is so weird though. We have plutonium being made. We're not backed up on nuclear waste. Everything looks fine, except for this. Why has our nuclear fuel rod production stopped? This is the line for nuclear fuel rods. That makes no sense. Usually it's a problem with the blenders here, but this is these are all working just fine. Yeah, you see they're all spinning, moving, grooving. Is it a problem with trains? Like a belt was deleted or replaced or something like that? No, train tracks look fine. Sulfur input, it's at the rate it should be. Nuclear chew, it's going. Heat sink input, the station's redundant. It's been redundant for a while, so I could take that out. Nuclear fuel rod components in. Well, that looks fine. That looks great. Yeah, okay, this is all to be expected because we have all of the nuclear power plants turned off. So this is like chock full of stuff. So what could possibly be the problem then? I guess we have to check the manufacturers and clearly we found the problem. Why are these not running? Encased uranium cells. They don't have encased uranium cells. But we literally just saw that all that stuff was running. Is that the same problem with everything? No cells. That makes... okay. I guess we have to follow the belt because I am certain that those are running. Uh, what's the deal here? There are all the cells. Wait, where are they going? <laughs> oh, this, <laughs> this goes to awesome things? Okay, why am I dumping the most mission critical part of our nuclear power plant into an awesome sink? That doesn't seem like a past Kibbs thing to do. It looks like because this isn't set right. That's overflow. And then this is any undefined. Now the vast majority of them go back towards the factory. As they should. How? I, you know what? I think that's a problem with update six experimental. I think the smart splitter was reset because that wouldn't randomly change. Fact, you know what? We've got to check this other one too. This is for the nuclear fuel rods. Left is overflow. Oh, so these reset. So yeah, left is any, which goes to the power plants, and center goes to the awesome sinks. Okay, so that was the whole problem. Very peculiar, very experimental kind of problem. And if that is the case, then we should probably just turn these off for the foreseeable future. 
This is just so like the nuclear power plant wouldn't get as irradiated if things built up, but considering we are dealing with the problem we are dealing with, well, things are gonna get a whole lot more spicy and hot in here. <laughs> but at least the problem is solved. Oh, our lizard doggo escaped. Maybe he changed everything. Hmm. Suspect. I will have to send out a warrant for his arrest. Anyway, that problem seems and probably is solved. I'm just gonna assume it is. Check back on it later. And for now, we have to deal with the real big problem for today. That was only step one, brother. Cause that pales in comparison to the problems we have over at the aluminum plant here. So our big goal has been to make batteries. That's what all this stuff is for so far. Except I made a critical error. A pretty big whoopsies. You see, I wanted to use a blender recipe for the batteries. The blender recipe looks pretty good. It uses sulfuric acid, alumina solution, and casings to make batteries in some water. Cool. Makes 20 batteries per minute per machine. And then I was using this other alternate recipe though, which uses sulfur, alclad sheets, plastic, and wire to make 30 batteries. And I thought, nah, wait, this sucks, right? This recipe is way better, specifically because sulfuric acid probably is more efficient. And then if you go and look at the recipes in here, it does look more efficient, like six sulfur versus 2.5 sulfuric acid, where sulfuric acid is one to one with sulfur. That's amazing. Plus seven alclad aluminum sheets versus a little bit of alumina in a casing. Yeah, I don't think though, this, this sucks, right? Wrong. I was live streaming and people in the chat were like, hey Kibbs, but the production rate of this is 20 per minute. And the production rate of this alternate recipe is 30 per minute. And oh my gosh, if <laughs> I actually ran the full numbers through my spreadsheets of this alternate battery recipe, and it is by far more efficient. So uh, yeah, we're not going with this recipe anymore. And that means we have some uh, changes for all of this. Well. Not exactly all of this. All of those casings, we're still gonna use for our project. However, we need to get everything together now for this. And although this is a bit of an inconvenience to change the plans around, it's not the end of the world. We have extra bauxite and we have extra space. So we're just gonna get rocking and rolling. So we're using the sloppy alumina recipe, bauxite, water, alumina. Then we throw it into another refinery to make a bunch of scrap. Then that all goes downstairs into smelters to make pure aluminum ingots. So in this space, we're gonna make a mini version of what we've been doing in the last couple videos. So we won't dabble on this for too long because we have a lot to do. The only real thing is spacing. I think according to my spreadsheets, we're gonna need another four of these refineries. So hopefully they will fit. There might be just enough space, come on. Okay, there's a belt that has to be moved, but yeah, that'll work and then we can fit one in front. I just can't move this main walkway. That's like our main walking path through this entire area. So I'm not compromising there. Oh, but we got plenty of space with room to spare. Okay, so that's all fine. Refinery is over there. Then over here, we're gonna need 20 smelters, and we're gonna need a bit of room for belt work, so we're gonna leave this little pathway open, and we'll start building the smelters down this way. Can we fit 10 per row? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's perfect. <laughs> You'll love to see it. Just in case, though, we're gonna add in a little extra room going out this way. We'll have like a wall about here. We'll have this going up. We're gonna be making a lot more aluminum ingots here and the belt work's gonna get crazy again. So in preparation for that, I'm gonna make a bit of space. Have the build go out 
this way into the refinery section. And we're going to be able to place a bunch of belts here. It's just another belt tower, long story short. So do we have to have this? No. But will future kids appreciate it? You better believe it. Plus, having like weird divots and like changes to patterns gives the building character. So as that design kind of works its way up, it'll have belts and pipes and all that jazz on it. It'll look more interesting. I hope. So we'll see. Anyway, we went ahead and did a little bit more work getting the machines in and trying to organize. There we go. And I managed to fit all of them in along with all the belt work. It's nothing too crazy. Again, we've been doing this for a little while now. So that's all of the scrap. Or at least it would have been. Except I've made another mission critical mistake. <laughs> all the amount of machines in my entire base here are wrong. Almost. So when you overclock a machine, right? You don't have to build as many. So in my spreadsheets, I'm always like, okay, cool. We have to make like 3,600 aluminum scrap, for example, right? Well, how many machines is that? Well, you divide that by the output of these bad boys, which vanilla is 360, so 3,600 divided by 360. You need to build 10 refineries. But since I overclock, what you should do is do like the 10 refineries divided by 2.5, because you get to overclock, right? <laughs> well, in my spreadsheets, I accidentally made that number a three instead of 2.5. Whoops. So does that mean I have to redo literally everything down here? Well, no, thankfully. I kind of was figuring out something was wrong and I built extra capacity because like numbers weren't lining up, but I, I couldn't tell what the mistake was. So everything down here is fine. But what we just built is not. We're gonna need another two refineries for the sloppy alumina and the scrap plus another four smelters. Now, I can't believe this, but this is all luck, I swear. This is not planned. We have exactly enough space for four smelters in this extra little space we made. So smelter-wise, we can just throw them in like here and GG easy, done. That is not the same story though, with the giant refineries. These belts, they can't move. This is it, this is all the room we had for them. So um, uh, let's take a journey, guys. Let's go over this way. Uh, this is going to be a giant logistics floor. And this is the giant main feature tower in front of the base. And it has no purpose right now, except it's going to just hide an extra two refineries over here, okay? We'll never see them again, don't worry. Never see them again. We'll just put them right down here. We'll make a little bit of scrap for us. Then we'll run that scrap all the way back down into those smelters. And we'll run the aluminum right back up. And everything will be happy, happy, okay? Okay, glad we had this chat. So now I gotta focus up and figure out how the heck I'm doing the rest of this belt work and pipe work. But I have a bit of a plan for the pipes. So we need a bit of water into these systems to get them booted up. So we're gonna bring some water from the other side of the factory, because there's like a little lake over there we're gonna have to yoink from. Bring the pipes over here and then into this wall. From this wall, pipes will go on the outside of the factory, go down here, and somehow make it look good and go into there. All right, it just adds a little bit of character to the wall. Of course, we're gonna have to move some stuff around and decorate, but having an extra little something something here Will help. Plus, one of the other things I'm trying to do with this factory is make it look cool. And an easy way to do that is just to make it really, really busy in here. So, if we have the pipe there, it's gonna be like up floating in on the ceiling for us. So, we'll fly into the factory, we'll see a bunch of pipes up there, hopefully, we'll have a bunch of belts running around. Yeah, it'll look really interesting. 
Oh yeah, that added a little bit of detail in here. A little bit of color, a little bit of life. Plus, we got to add in these vertical pipes here too, because with the aluminum setup, a byproduct is water, which we have to feed back into the system to get rid of. So we have like this pipe balancing going on, but on the ceiling and it's like, what? It's crazy. Love it. Plus I was able to get a couple belts in too. These belts are for the bauxite. And I'm just bringing those over from the train station over there. Say so scoot over, scoot in. Obviously all fine, all dandy. Then the scrap again goes over to the smelters. And then all of the aluminum ingots go to these two belts that run right past our main walkway. So there's gonna be tons of movement going up to this floor, a logistics area. Then I've prepped the floor above that for all the processing we have to do. Because remember, for the batteries we're trying to make, we got a lot on the agenda. So sulfur, we already have that here. The aluminum for these outclad aluminum sheets, we have it. Except now we have everything else we still need to get. So we're gonna need a bunch of copper, we're gonna need plastic, and we're gonna need an abundant amount of wire, like an unholy amount. 3,000 wire per minute? Something like that. For the wire, we're gonna be using constructors, of course. And we're gonna use the iron wire recipe, because there's a ton of iron around this area that I'm not gonna be using. And the alclad sheets, of course, are done in an assembler. And there is no alternate for them, I believe. Nope, it's just this. So we're gonna need a bunch of copper. And then plastic, well, you know, I have absolutely no idea what we're gonna do about plastic, but that's a future kids problem. Right now though, we gotta get some copper and iron refined. We have a giant refinery area over here, so I guess just get going on them. At least we have unlimited power shards, so this isn't the end of the world. Just go to the here iron ingot recipe. Overclock this out the Hwazu. 35 ore per machine times 2.5 is 87.5. I know for a fact we just built eight machines, so 87.5 times eight, about 700 production capacity. That's how much iron we need to feed this, which is great because that's a fully overclocked iron node. And we have a bunch of those sitting right over there. Yeah, we have three free, in fact, which is insane. And of course, because I'm insane too, I'm just like, hey, why don't we just bring back extra and build like, you know, an extra 50 refineries? Why not? Let's just do it. Let's go for it. Have fun. Now we have all of the iron we're gonna need for this project, I'm sure. Maybe even more so. Yeah, we have like a thousand free here. And it's all hooked up, ready to go, and belted to where it needs to be. And some of them are even powered. Water brought over from the same sippy drink lake over that way, and it should be fine, except that was only round one. We still need copper. And unfortunately, we don't really have a lot of copper. Copper is a bit of a spooky one. Uh, all of the copper nodes down in this crater lake area are being used for other things. And the closest copper nodes next to us are down over here, which is over the face of a giant cliff, or over here, which is through the Titan Forest, which is like insano. And if we're going anywhere, we're gonna go into the Titan Forest because look, we already have some infrastructure over there. So hopefully we can just hook up an extra copper belt underneath here and call it a day. Just had to do a little bit of belt wrangling to get things into position properly, but it's fine. Plus, went back and got all the refineries built and holy, we have so much copper now, it's gonna be great. That's a pure node, right? So that's 16 refineries. So like 1500 copper ingots for us to mess around with. And I think we only needed like 600, at least for the battery project. So, fantastico. Next, I was bringing up everything over to our project area. So we have more chaotic belts just going everywhere. And we are ready to get processing. 
everything is going to start over this way up here and we have to build a ton of machines all fully overclocked by the way so it's going to use up an insane amount of power <laughs> but again we do have an insane amount of power so not the end of the world where do we begin I guess we can start with the alclad sheets. Alclad sheets, we're gonna build over here. We need 24 of them. So we could just build a couple sets of four here. That'll be fine. Material goes in this way, exit through this tile. That'll be good. And there should be just enough space to about here. And then that will be all of the assemblers. Then the constructors. We need 60 of them. I'm thinking we make three rows of 20. So yeah, this would have been like 240 if not for the power shards. Thank goodness. This belt work and even the power for this is going to be ridiculous. Future kids problem. For now, the best part of the game in my opinion. Extreme building clicking. But then that's immediately followed by the most tedious part, actually belting everything together. Oh boy. No, it, it should be fine. Just throw on my Spotify music, link in the description by the way, and it's kind of nice and relaxing. Plus, I don't think we have to do any crazy belt shenanigans. Each one of these constructors takes how much iron ingots per minute? 12.5 times 2.5. 31.25. So a full belt of uh, iron ingots divided by 31.25. It's about 25 machines. So I have all of the iron brought up right to here, and it can just overflow all the way down here. But instead, probably gonna bring some of that iron about halfway up. Just so things process a little bit faster, or at least things get started a little faster. So half will go to the first 10, other half to the last 10. We do the same thing for every single row. Then for the alclad sheets, it's actually gonna be even easier than that. Cause for the copper, we need 600 across all of the machines. And we have three kind of pairs of assemblers. So there's these two, these two, and then these two at the end. And copper wise then, all we have to do is plop down a splitter and that can send the copper to each of the subsystems there. And then we have our aluminum, which I actually made a little extra of, just in case. And also to make my life easier because now they're each a 720 line. There's three lines, three setups. See what I mean? Super, super simple stuff. And in only an hour, everything is belted up and ready to go. 3,000 wire per minute and 1,750 Alcloud aluminum sheets automated. And everything is gonna be heading over this way. So the Alcloud sheets go up. Got like six belts of wire coming this way. And now we make the batteries somehow because uh this is kind of the end of the line here i don't have the rest of the factory designed and also this is gonna be the end of the video too this is a very grindy episode lots of machines to build the last thing is the power looking good yeah power is looking fine so hopefully next time then we can get those batteries automated and for now i hope you guys enjoyed and thank you for watching but have a fantastic rest of your day and bye bye